Welcome to my Excel video on estimating the difference of the means. So you're constructing a confidence interval from mu1 minus mu2, but this time sigmas are not given. So sigmas are unknown, so instead we're going to use S1 and S2 that are representative of the sample version of the sigmas. All right, uh, again, we and remember this time, instead of the Z, we're going to use the T value. Because every time the sigmas are not given, you use T scores instead of Z scores, because that's what the formula tells us to do. All right, so I read the exercise again, and first set of numbers are item first, and you know second public, private. I just some people wonder if you're at the private first or public second. I'll just go with the, what the problem says. The problem first talks about public, so I'm going to make that first. Whatever the problem talks about first, make that first. So in the United States, the average size for in public, so public goes first, and private goes second. Our primary at 23 and 19, so n1, uh, so x1 bar is the average class size, x1 bar is 23, x2 bar is 19. Uh, there are uh, standard deviations, and it says sample standard deviations, so a, a, these are s's, are 3 and 5 respectively, so 3 and 5. Now your first sample size is 38, and your second sample size is 32. So let's plug that in here, type it up in Excel so I can calculate the lower and upper confidence limits. So the x1 bar is 23, x2 bar is 19, uh, s1 is 3, s2 is 5, n1 is 38, n2 is 32. Okay, now let's try to find the uh, t value. So I will come here to write you the command. So you recall when we did the T, you, you, you type, just you typing, you're trying to find a T value, and it's dot inverse, because everything in this module is inverse. Uh, and you go with two tail. Now it says probability, now the inside probability is 95, so 0.95, so the two tails will be one minus that, which is, point, which is 5%, which is 0.05. So you write 0.05, so write the, you write the area in both tails, so basically 1 minus the confidence level, and the confidence level is 95. 1 minus 0.95 is 0.05, or 100% minus 95 is 5%. 5% means 0.05. That's what you type there. Comma, degrees of freedom. Well, remember we told you for n degrees of freedom, is for t values, degrees of freedom is n minus 1, but here you have two n's. Which one do you pick? Do you pick 38 minus 1, which is 37, or do you pick 32 minus 1, which is 31? Well, the formula says, or Simon says, or the mathematicians say, pick the smaller one. So, and who are we to argue with that? So, we pick the smaller one, uh, which is uh, 31. So, I'll write 31 as my degrees of freedom. So, remember, when you have two of them, the degrees of freedom will be the n minus 1, but for the smaller one. So, Whichever, whether it's n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1, you pick the smaller one and you type it there. And enter, and it gives you the value, 2.039513446. Uh, so let's say I ask you for, uh, let's say, three decimal places. So you type 2.04. Because three decimal places will be 2.0, and then three turns into, you know, nine is higher than five. So actually nine, and then five is higher than, five is five and above, so the nine upgrades itself to ten, which that becomes zero, and the three becomes four. So if you're uncomfortable with that, you could just go over here and just round it using Excel. You just round it to three decimal places there. So you get the same thing, 2.040. All right, so it doesn't matter. I would have told you to round it to two decimal places or three decimal places. Either way, it's 2.04. But anyhow, so that's that. So you wrote three decimal places, but Excel doesn't recognize it. So you could actually add another decimal place just to be technically correct. So you write equal to, to do the left-hand side. Now, instead of just typing x1 bar, you have to type the difference of the two. And remember... And you don't even need to remember, you look at a formula in front of you, you notice that they've put x1 bar minus x2 bar in parentheses, so so should you. So open parentheses, x1 bar minus x2 bar, close parentheses, minus the t value, which is right there, times the square root of uh, s1 squared, 
So it's S1 to the power of 2, S1 squared, divide by N1, which is 38, plus uh, S2 squared this time. So S2 squared, divide by N2, which is 32. And that will be the left-hand side. Uh, now, same thing for the right-hand side, but remember now, if you're comfortable typing these and you don't need to practice anymore, you know, you could just copy this, control C, now don't touch your mouse again because you're going to mess it up, just press enter, now do control V or paste, oops, what happened? See, that's what happens when you do that, let me try this again, control C, that's general, control paste, huh. Today it isn't the same size as the collection. Why? Uh, because I've made them uh, all in one cell. So uh, it doesn't like that. So let me make them into one cell. And then I can extend the answer. So let me try that again. Let's copy it. It would have been better if you just retyped it, wouldn't it? So control C, enter, control V. Yeah, it has to work. And then you go in it and change the minus to a plus. So that avoids you having to retype the whole thing, and that's the other side. So now if you want to make them all again center it, you could center it. I just did it so that it looks prettier if it's centered. But if you combine the cells, for some reason, it doesn't like to copy and paste, apparently. So anyways, that's the left-hand side. That's the right-hand side. So you write mu1 minus mu2. So let me change this to text. So you write uh, mu1 minus mu2, mu1 minus mu2. Of course, you don't need to write this because uh, you don't write mu1 because you'll either be using a pencil, so you'll actually type M mu, the symbol mu1 minus mu2, or it'll be uh, on, on canvas where you'll just type the value on the left and type the, type the number on the right. Now, the number on the left here, if you use, let's say, three decimal places, will be 1.942. And the right side would be the upper class limit, or sometimes they call it control limit, would be 6.058. 6.058. So that's how it would look like. And if I want to just extend it into, so you could see the whole thing. There you go. So, so the confidence interval is anywhere between 1.942 and 6.058. Thank you.